Hi guys, welcome back to Pierre Hashi Music. Today I'm going to give you my very best tips, tricks, and exercises to help improve your bar chords on ukulele or guitar. So stay tuned. <music> Bar chords are challenging for everyone. It's one of those big hurdles to cross to get into some more advanced songs and playing, but it's something that you really need to work on and that you can take step by step with simple exercises to develop the strength and dexterity to get there. I'll start by giving you a few tips and tricks to help improve the sound and feel of your bar chords, and then I'll show you a couple specific exercises that will help improve your strength to get a nice sounding bar, as well as the dexterity needed to bar and press with the tips of your fingers at the same time, which is one of the most challenging parts of working on these bar chords. But first, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you want to stay up to date on all my latest content, as well as some upcoming books, be sure to subscribe to my email list and check out my Facebook group, Beginner Ukulele Videos. So I'll demonstrate these on ukulele, but of course the exact same principles apply to the guitar. So if you're having trouble barring on a guitar, try these out. So as far as general tips, what you want to make sure to do is keep your thumb in the back and lower it a bit, which will lengthen your fingers and give you a little more reach. Press close to the fret, close to the metal bar that's on the side of the sound hole. Not over here, but at this end. It makes it easier to get a nice sound. Obviously, the index should be very straight and rigid, and you don't want to get into the habit of clamping down with other fingers. Though it may seem like it helps at first, it's going to be a problem later on. You want your index to be used to pressing on its own to get a nice sound so that your other fingers are free to press on the frets and create the desired chord shape. You can also experiment with rolling your finger, kind of using the edge, the side of it, where it's a little harder, and that can help to get a nice sound, as well as experimenting with the height. So sometimes if you go a little higher up, you'll find a kind of a bonier spot on your finger to get a nice sound. If the fleshy part of your finger is around the first and second string, um, sometimes they won't ring, right? You'll get a muted sound. So experiment with the height of your finger to get a bony spot, you know, find that sweet spot, and then you can kind of roll tilt this way to get a nice sound. As far as exercises that can really help, what I often tell my students is to start by pressing only two strings around the fifth or sixth fret where it's easier to press. Same thing on guitar, towards the middle of the neck, only two strings and get a nice sound there and then gradually work your way towards the first fret where it's actually a little harder to press. The first fret the strings are a little stiffer here so you gotta dig in, press really hard and this is a gradual, gradual way to build up that strength. Then repeat with three strings. So starting let's say at the sixth fret, getting a nice sound on three and you work your way down until it kind of breaks down until you no longer have a nice sound. Remember, keep those previous tips in mind and only use one finger to bar. And the goal here would be to get to the first fret with three nice sounding strings. Lastly, four strings, same idea. So on guitar, you're gonna go up to five and six and work your way down. Six strings can be difficult, especially since only the index is playing all of the strings, it's normal if it takes you a while to get there. If you can get to all four here or four or five strings on the guitar, that's pretty good. A next step to then improve your bars would be to go back to the beginning here, just two strings, I'll go to the sixth fret, and then I'm adding one finger, so my middle finger would be on the first string right next to it, adjacent, and then getting a nice sound there. And then my third finger, pressing with the tip, and my pinky making sure that both strings ring. I can do the same thing, but on the second string. This is a little harder. So now the bar that has to ring, the, note, the barred note that has to ring is the first, and I'm gonna press the second string on each available fret here with each available finger. There are three, right? Three possibilities. Same process, working my way down to the first fret. So you see how this is a gradual process, and if you kind of keep track and do a little bit every day, you'll really improve. That dexterity will come. Three strings, right? So let's say the fifth fret, three strings. Then I add one finger. Add the next finger. 
and so on. And what's going to happen is you'll stumble upon actual chord shapes. So if I do this one, if I bar all four and have my pinky, that's a major chord. That's a major bar. And if I do this one and have my third finger up top, that's a minor chord. Okay, if I bar all four and have my middle finger here, that's a dominant chord, a seven. Okay, so these exercises do in fact end up shaping real chords. And in an upcoming video, I'll dive more into the details of what these different bars are, how to identify them and move them around the neck. This exercise is more just for the strength and dexterity to play them. I hope all this makes sense. Uh, again, starting with just two strings, working your way down, three strings, four strings, and then adding one finger at a time to each of those steps and even trying different strings as you add the fingers. Keep track two, three minutes a day, and you will really see results, I promise. Consistency is the key. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Stick around. There's plenty more beginner ukulele and guitar content on the way. Be sure to subscribe. Click the thumbs up. It really means a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.